welcome to another episode of Region Diary, the show that brings to you special stories from your state. I'm your host Priyadarshini. If you are a coffee lover, visit the Nagaland Coffee Shop which is situated at Dimapur to get the taste of coffee produced in Nagaland. Interestingly, coffee produced in Nagaland is also making waves in global market. Take a look at our special report. started and what is the specialty of it? Uh, the Nagaland Coffee Shop uh, started uh, in order to have an aim so that uh, we can promote our own local grown coffee and the speciality of this coffee is uh, it is locally processed and roasted uh, by o our own local people only so uh, the thing behind this is we want to promote our Nagaland Coffee not only in, uh, in our state but also uh, to district which produces the coffee uh, right now uh, we have uh, five districts producing the coffee uh, namely um, Kukchun, uh, Wakha, Zinaboto, uh, Jaluki and Mon. Uh, according to um, the roasting profiles we have done the best coffee right now uh, is uh, from uh, Zinaboto. Basically we are exporting to three different uh, countries uh, at the moment. Uh, one is in Cape Town, South Africa uh, and the other two is in the Middle East which is uh, Barian and Cape Town. Cape Town uh, the coffee shop is still in process but in Bar uh, Barian it's up and running and the response is uh, quite good so we do about uh, 500 to 1 ton per month uh, in the coffee uh, in the cap, uh, coffee shop itself and in Cape Town uh, we are doing more than a ton per month so basically Nagalin coffee is uh, getting a very good response there are two types of uh, grinds we use uh, basically this one is a, a grounded coffee where we are uh, using for a retail pr uh, products 
to sell it to our customers. This one is the whole beans. Uh, this one is basically 100% uh, ar Arabica. There are different types of species of uh, coffee, but the most two, two most commonly used are the uh, Arabica and the Robusta. But uh, Robusta is uh, basically not a specialty coffee. So we, uh, as uh, in uh, Nag uh, Naglin Coffee, uh, we try to promote and use uh, most of our uh, specialty coffee. So we're using uh, this Arabica uh, whole beans. And uh, the advantage of this specialty coffee is uh, they have, uh, there are different uh, flavors. So it, uh, according to the roast and according to the places we get the coffee from, uh, there can be different flavors like uh, a fruity flavor, a caramel flavor, a nutty flavor. So depending on that, uh, uh, there's an advantage of uh, using this specialty coffee. We are, we are uh, planning to uh, expand our business, but uh, as of now, uh, since we have started uh, this uh, franchisee shop in Dimapur, uh, we will uh, maybe just uh, uh, let it run and see how it goes. And if it's successful, then we can expand further, maybe to Koyama and also to other districts and in the near future to even uh, different parts of India. Also with its increase in export, Nagaland coffee is making waves in the global market. The 86th Air Force Day Airfest 2018 was held recently in Shillong. The fest was a window of opportunity for the common people to have a glimpse of the services rendered by the Indian Air Force towards the country. The spectacular air display with fly-past and daring crosses of Mi-17 helicopters and Su-30 MKI multi-role fighter aircraft touched the sky with glory on the occasion of Airfest 2018 that was recently held in Shillong. In sync with the 86th Air Force Day celebration, the Headquarters Eastern Air Command at Upper Shillong to organize the Air Force Festival. Speaking on the occasion, Air Officer Commanding-in-Chief of Eastern Air Command, Air Marshal R. Nambiar said, the fest, which is held annually, provides an opportunity to the people to have a glimpse of the services rendered by the Indian Air Force towards the country. This Air Fest is uh, conducted uh, yearly, every year at Shillong uh, for the Air Force Day. We, this is an opportunity for us to open our doors and let uh, the people of Shillong and nearby places to come and have a look at what we do, how uh, we spend taxpayers' money, how we build up capabilities and how we do our work in a safe and uh, correct fashion and demonstrate to the people of this area how the Indian Air Force is for them and will always remain for them. Demonstrations by the Special Garut Commandos of the Indian Air Force and performance by the military band were some of the highlights of the three-day fest that kicked off on October 6th at the Shillong Advanced Landing Ground. <laughs> Indian Air Force has set up various stalls which include Indian Air Force Publicity Stall, Souvenir Stall and Delectable Food Stalls. Various adventure activities such as Zorbing Ball, Repelling and Crawling were also offered. 
Students from various schools and colleges also got opportunity to acquire information regarding career opportunities in the Indian Air Force. I am seeing this for the first time. Actually, I am a tourist here. I am from Kerala and I thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank you. I really enjoyed the first and uh, whatever the stalls are there, handicrafts and choppers and the air show and everything about it. So, I am just loving it. That's all. The fest hosted by the Indian Air Force attracted huge participation of people from across the state. With inputs from Roshan Rai, this is Pooja Mishra for Northeast Life. Alright, now it's time for a short break. We have lots more on the other side, so stay tuned. Welcome back, you're watching Region Diary with me, Priyadarshini. And the All India Radio Debrugar is celebrating its Golden Jubilee with a year-long program with nearly 3,000 innovative and new programs. Despite many shortcomings, the station is still rendering its service to its listeners as a medium of infotainment. Dear listeners, welcome to Akashwani Dibrugar. Such high-pitched voices emanating from radio sets, welcoming the listeners of not only Assam but also Arunachal Pradesh and parts of Nagaland to tune to Yuvavani, storytelling, live phone-in and hosts of other shows that are presented in Assamese and Hindi along with Diori, Singfao, Khamti, Wanchu and many more dialects. From analog to digital transmission, the All India Radio Station of Dibrugar has come a long way. On completion of more than four decades of its journey, the station has been celebrating its Golden Jubilee since the 15th of February this year with year-long programs showcasing the glorious services of this All India Radio Station. Uh, All India Radio Dibrugar is celebrating its Golden Jubilee year this year. Uh, since 15 February this year, uh, it will continue up to uh, 15 February to, to next year. So uh, during this year, we have lined out nearly uh, 3,000 innovative and new programs, uh, considering the listeners as our most beloved and uh, to make them feel that All India Radio is dear organization, they can participate. Earlier, what happened, All India Radio used to be the society's criminalious organization. Now, this media organization has gone in real sense to the listeners. And there, uh, this organization is addressing the listeners' problem and listeners' interest, listeners' choice, their uh, taste involved the listeners directly with our programs. We designed a program titled Akakbani uh, Dibrugor Arumoy. That is basically the uh, listeners' participatory program where the listeners describes how he or she is involved with this organization. Sadly, all is not well in this station. Today, the All India Radio Debrugar is struggling for its existence. More than one third of its staff strength lying vacant and the lack of infrastructure development have crippled the functioning of this station. Actually, there are 86 uh, sanctioned posts, but at present there are 50 posts in positions. 
So, uh, any measures being taken to fill up this post? Uh, yes. Actually, we are uh, giving our requisition to our uh, directory. And uh, if possible, uh, if, uh, they are giving the, they are posting the uh, staffs accordingly. Any immediate future plans to? At present, uh, we have already new is installed transmitter, 300 kilowatt, mm -hmm. which is covering all around more than 400 kilometer. Mm -hmm. Means uh, it, uh, sometimes it uh, the there are listener in Guwahati also. Our signal reaches Guwahati also. Lord Kenrod. John Mala Gunnar Bhai has been in Kobe lately. When is Kobe number two? Not 1969. But from the Bihar Kendra, I am going to see that. Amar Khomayad. I am. Jee ka khoron jamdi. I am. Bani bandhu ba onnenno onusangila kami prastut kori silo. He khomayad analog system asile. Itiya that is all for the digital jete hul. Amar dinno ta ami. Did I also know that for the phone call? Did I last time melodies when we used to present? I was an English announcer, so I used to present Western music at 12:30. So I had to play the long playing records. There was a player, and he had to put the record, place the record, and play the selected song from there. After the microphone to take, microphone on Korea, on Korea, go feather take, feather take, record from Bollywood, feather on Korea, go again. So that was the system. Leafing through the pages of history, the station established in 1969 is one of the strongest in the entire country with a 300 kilowatt transmitter. Even after the Indochina war in 1962, the Chinese were still interested in Arunachal Pradesh for which they had established a high frequency transmitter across the international border. Programs aired by Chinese radio stations can be listened to by the villagers in the bordering areas of the state. In order to counter Chinese aggression through these waves, the central government had decided to establish the Dibruga station. Called the theater of mind for its ability to form vivid pictures in the minds of the listeners, the Dibruga radio station with its year-long programs is aspiring to connect to more and more listeners, make radio an effective medium of infotainment among the new generation and recreate its lost glory. With inputs from Ripun Joy Das, this is Fahad Zarika for North East Live. All right, the Arunachal Pradesh Women Welfare Society recently celebrated its 39th Foundation Day. The society is firm in its objective of working for the betterment of the women in Arunachal Pradesh. Have a look at our special report. The Arunachal Pradesh Women's Welfare Society or APWWS sweats by its motto of empowering women for better tomorrow. From polygamy, 33% women reservation in Panchayat and Municipal to the formation of the Arunachal Pradesh State Commission for Women, the APWWS has been playing a pivotal role for women's welfare. The society recently celebrated its 39th Foundation Day at Dree Ground in Itanagar. The Arunachal Pradesh Women's Welfare Society was founded on October 10, 1979. Gracing the occasion as the guest of honor, DC Capital Prince Dhawan lauded the contribution of the APWWS towards the society for taking up issues affecting women and children. Polygamy ke against fight ho, ya 33% reservation ki baat ho, ya aapki state commission for women ki baat ho, ye sab cheezo mein I understand that the APWWS has a very big role in APWWS. And the fact that you are so beautiful, the flag that is flying here, is the logo of the people that are in the world, that is the fact that they are in the form of the women today, they are in the form of the women today, and they are in the form of the women today. And in Arunachal, they are in the form of the women today, APWWS is going to take it. So on this foundation day, 
ये ए की जो कुछ अचीवमेंट्स रही हैं इस पर हमने जो गौर फरमाया प्रेसिडेंट मैडम की स्पीच में ये एक बहुत ही सराहनीय और अप्रिशिएटिव बात है कि हम लोगों ने ए से एक सर्वे करवाया था वुमेन सिक्योरिटी को लेकर के कौन से डार्क कॉर्नर्स हैं कौन सी डार्क ऐसे एरियाज हैं जहां रात में वुमेन फील इन सिक्योर बिकॉज ऑफ लैक ऑफ लाइटिंग कि वहां पे लाइट नहीं है वो सर्वे करके हमको एपीडब्ल्यूडब्ल्यूएस की टीम मेंबर्स ने ईटानगर नाहर लगन ब्रांचेस ने अलग अलग सर्वे करके हमको दिया करना है गवर्नमेंट ने हमको हंड्रेड लाख रुपीज सेंक्शन करे हैं और हम वो सारी जगहों पे टेंडर फ्लोट करके जनवरी तक लाइटें लगा देंगे APWWS President Deepthi Bengia Tado during the Foundation Day celebration said since its inception the organization has been fighting against all the evil meted out to women Tado said that today women have thrown off the shackles of the conventional thinking and came out of the confines of the four wall Pehle to jab मैं 93 में यहाँ इसको ज्वाइन किया 93 से लेकर 2003 तक लड़ाई ही लड़ाई अगेंस्ट पॉलीगेमी अगेंस्ट चाइल्ड मैरिज अगेंस्ट फोर्स मैरिज और सोशल uh, इवेंट्स का अगेंस्ट में औरतों पर बहुत सी ये बंदिशें थी जैसे औरतों को कहा जाता था कि किचन संभालना है घर के चार दीवार से बाहर निकालने की क्या ज़रूरत है बोलकर तो आज आ, लेकिन औरतें बाहर आ सक रही है दे हैव फ्रीडम नाउ द ए पी डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एस हैज बिन स्टिकिंग टू इट्स गन्स ऑफ वर्किंग फॉर द वेलफेयर ऑफ द सोसाइटी ऑन द होल विद इनपुट्स फ्रॉम इंदू चाकू दिस इज निधि का कौर फॉर नॉर्थ ईस्ट लाइफ That's all we have in this episode of Region Diary. We will be back next week with another episode and with lots more interesting stories from the region. Till then, keep watching Northeast Life and do not forget to send your feedback and suggestions. We would love to hear it from you. So this is Priya Darshini signing off for now, and please write in at regiondiary at gmail dot com. Goodbye.